condition. You win. You're going. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to May the 4th. Insert Star Wars joke here. May the 4th. Um, it's a good day. You should point out Don, right? Don has the only Star Wars thing going on in the background. <laughs> Yes, she does. Well, that's Amazing. for every day, not just May the 4th. It that's is. Every day. Special highlight today. How about that? Oh, <laughs> you might recognize you. this. I do recognize that. And that even has a button that does something. <laughs> it does. Yeah. <laughs> is it doing it? Yeah, yeah I can so push it in. It comes out of his. his oh, oh I, I was waiting for sound. Sorry. No. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope everyone's doing okay today. I uh, will put the minutes in here one more time just in case you missed it. And if you can do us a favor and add yourself to the agenda as an attendee, that would be amazing. Um, I hope everybody's doing all right today. I know things are still a little bit. Um, not a little bit, pretty awful in India. So um, just want to just do a quick check-in with Yash and, and Ritik. I think they're the only ones on who are in, over in India. Yash, are you doing all right? Yep, all good there. Okay, not to put you on the spot, but we just want to check in with you. Ritik, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm also doing fine. Actually, I'll be booking my vaccine slot for next door, next to next week. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Good to hear that. Okay, so let's move ahead with our agenda. Um, the first one on the um, agenda number one is that we are reviving our Slack, hooray, hooray, uh, for those who don't hate Slack yet. Um, and it finally actually, after all these years, made me install the actual Slack app because now I just have too many workspaces. So, so thanks a lot, guys. Just kidding, um, it's fine. So anyway, hop in there and say hello. We have a new channel as well called Office Hours. For newcomers, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. You can also ask them in the general channel, but um, if you are a little intimidated by that, it's totally fine. Just come in office hours. There's a few of us hang out in there. Happy to answer any questions and welcome you to the project. Give you um, uh, some direction. If you know whatever you're looking for, we can point you in the, in the right direction. So um, the link is in the minutes. Feel free to um, hop in there with us. Any questions or comments about that? Anything to add? Pretty straightforward. There are, uh, Slack. there are a lot of channels going on in there right now. Uh, don't know what some of those channels are or if they're active. Uh, is, there, is there any way we could do some house cleaning in there? Maybe remove the uh, non-active ones or? Uh, yeah, we can. I know, um, so the DNI badging, the EI badging um, initiative used Slack quite a bit. So I think some of those channels were being used by that team, um, but we can certainly um, check in with them and see if there's any that they want to let go. Otherwise, I'm good to leave them. Like I don't, I don't. It doesn't bother me. But um, yeah, I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not recommending removing anything that's being used. Uh, but if it's not being used, it might be easy to. It might be nice to get rid of it. I think the. Uh, maybe important to remember that one of the reasons that we wanted the Slack channel was to make it easier for newcomers to uh, ask questions and join the group. And uh, for a newcomer uh, opening a, a Slack channel that has 20 channels in it, uh, that might, might be difficult to figure out where to go. So. And someone who just joined, does it autom automatically drop you in the general channel? It should, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think everyone's added to general channel. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So we'll be picking that up and just um, having that as another way to communicate. In addition to the mailing list, I think is our primary one. There is an IRC. I don't know how active it is. I don't think it's super active. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but mostly we'll just try this. And if we like it, awesome. If we don't, cool, we'll do something else. The okay. is not um, super active. Oh. I'm there, I'm monitoring it and direct people other 
places. And then the more Okay, thanks for that context, Georg. That's helpful. So Slack will try and see how that goes. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is just says one page metrics question mark. So I don't know who put that in there, but if they'd like to speak up, we can talk about that. Not me. I can I can talk about that one unless uh uh yeah, sure, Ritik would like to. Uh, yeah, I can talk about that. Okay, go on. Uh, so the idea was to like, uh, we are having various working groups for metrics and then uh, the idea was to condense the metric size to like one page, uh, I think a soft limit of one page or like some hard limit for two page metric, since it would be easier to, uh, uh, trim the matrix into uh, size of one or two page, like removing the tables, some extra tables and having some standard image size for the matrix. So like they don't stretch too much and uh, change the compression. Yeah, so this, this, this would be about, this came up during our, uh, uh, the metrics release automation. It'd be nice if the uh, metrics could all fit onto one page. Uh, so we started to have some discussions about changing font sizes and uh, all sorts of different formatting things to try to focus these metrics onto one page. Uh, and then uh, when we when we gave it a little more, deal with stuff like that, uh, it would be better to. Uh, possibly add that to the, the metrics template and, and just say, hey, metrics should be no longer than two pages or metrics, or can we get metrics down to one page? I have a concern on that. Like in a couple of metrics, we have a long list of filters or things which might expand, like go beyond the one page limit. So in this way, we are restricting not to add the content in the metric, it will be a caveat. So I would uh, consider rethinking, maybe we have a standard format for the template, like as we are already following, but limiting the text in the one page uh, is a challenging thing for some metrics. Yeah, I might propose that um, we maybe hold off on this for just a, a bit. There's been so much really good work that's being done right now in the PDF release, kind of that whole automation and then getting the PDF out that maybe it's not like forget about it, this issue, but table it or not table it wherever part of the world you're in um, for a later date. <laughs> Uh, I think we can classify this as a low priority issue, maybe. Yeah, I think it's a very reasonable thing to talk about. It just, maybe it's not something we need to solve right now. For the, uh, for the metrics release itself and the automation process in general, uh, our goal is to release. You cut out, Kevin. Form. I'm sorry? Did it cut out for anybody else or was it just me? Yeah, Kevin cut out. Yeah, Kevin. Can you hear me now? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, our goal is to release the metrics in the same form that we get them. So we don't want to be changing the formatting. We don't want to be making a bunch of edits from the, the metrics to the release. Uh, so the, the way that the working groups give them to us, that is the way, that is the ideal way for us to release them. Uh, so uh, one, two, however long the metrics are, we're, we're fine with that. Uh, if, if a one to two page metric is important in the future, yeah, definitely revisit it. But I, I don't believe it's appropriate for us to 
uh, edit the metrics. So we wouldn't be modifying the, the, the font size or anything or the, the formatting uh, for our release. But so Kevin, the formatting is just a plain text file, a markdown file. So whatever way we want to display that is up to the PDF creation. Right. So the 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 issue is if we have if we have three page metrics and two page metrics and we're trying to get them all into a standard release size, one metric has smaller font size than the other, or one metric is displayed differently. I agree. Uh, so yeah, we would not do that. So when when I when I say font size, that's what I or when I say uh, formatting, that's that's what I'm talking about. So we're our our goal is to release the metric as close to how we we get it as possible. If we're adding just kind of a, a layer of, of formatting on top of it just to make it look a little prettier and it's all the way and it's through, that's fine. But uh, modifying individual met metrics to make a one page or a two page metrics release possible. I, I don't think that's appropriate for us to be doing. So. Should we uh, open an issue in the website repository just as like a placeholder for a later discussion about this? Yeah, I actually think this would go in the governance repo because this would be a metrics templating issue. Okay. Uh, and there, Bridget, there are a few. And there are a few other metrics template issues that have come up through this as well, including uh, limiting the image size uh, or, or providing some guidance on image size uh, in metrics. And then uh, what else was there? there was, uh, oh, uh, linking, to, linking to other metrics is another issue that came up, how we link. And then the, possibly the use of tables in these metrics, because uh, markdown tables are, uh, um, they don't have a ton of uh, formatting options to them. So complex tables can be difficult or they, they render a little odd, so. Maybe we can lump all those in one issue. If you want to open that, Kevin or Ritik, either one, whoever wants yeah. to do that, yeah. just so we don't forget. I, I can open that. Talk about it. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for bringing that up, Ritik. I'm going to add you as an action item here, Kevin. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else on that? Are we good to go forward? Rock on. We shall then. Okay. So number three on the agenda, there was an idea brought up in the common uh, working group to talk about um, the potential for adding chairs or chair people to each working group. And they would be kind of the ones to um, run the meeting and facilitate things and make sure that you know metrics are moving forward. And we kind of have this already. We just didn't really make it official, I don't think. So, um, what do you all think about that? And it would be they, those people would be listed on the websites. Uh, I'm sorry, on the repos as the the chairs. And that's really where this conversation came: is is who's the contact person? Who's the one that kind of uh, merges PRs and that kind of keeps things together? So, um, do we want to talk about that? What do you, what do we all think? And I think the other the other component of that that we were talking about was I I think when we were talking about streamlining the the readmes and making those consistent across all of the the working groups that some of the groups have pretty long lists of maintainers and it's not really clear which ones are which ones are active and who do you talk to if you have questions. It's more of a contributor list really right now in a lot of working groups. Well, Yash, did you want to add anything to that since you were the one working on the readmes? I think it came out of that discussion. Yeah, actually, we have two things. We have maintainers and contributors. We are looking to remove the contributors and only have the website uh, working group repo maintainers. 
and preferably keep it down to two, that would be better. And so we were thinking that if we wanted to try to keep it down to two, it might be good to go with sort of like CNCF Kubernetes style working group chairs, which would allow you to have two people that are kind of the contact points. But then there are also um, a lot of other maintainers who can still merge pull requests and do all of the things that our existing maintainers have always done. I like this because it also like disambiguates the term maintainer in this. So we're just trying to have two people, as Don pointed out, that are the points of contact for the working groups. And we're not like getting things <laughs> confused with GitHub terminology too. So I think then the goal for those who participate in working groups will be to decide who those two people are. And also if there are other repositories that aren't technically working groups like governance or website or others, um, do we need chairs for them too? Or how do we, what do we wanna do? Probably, I mean, governance and website get a lot of activity and it would probably be good to have two people. I think if it, if it has a readme, it probably, or if the, if the repo has a readme, then, uh, then yes, and we can use the, uh, the standard the standardized uh, readme that uh, Yash is creating. So. And I think for the governance repo, our board co-chairs would be logical choice for the chairs for the governance repository. It's a good idea. Yep. Uh, so I think for the other repositories, some sections would not be needed. We can definitely cut them out when we create the repository, uh, when we create the readme. Yash, do you want to um, make a list of the repositories that don't have a chair when you're when you kind of all said and done? If there's like holes that need to be filled, I guess is, and then we can help you or figure out who those people are. Is that cool? Um, I guess we haven't named anyone exactly as chairs right now. I'm not sure what to do about that. So if we are willing to hold that discussion on a later date, that would be perfectly fine. We can keep those slots empty right now. Is that right? Do, I mean, yeah, do we? Yeah, so like, go ahead, Kevin. Job creating the standardized readme. Uh, but as part of that, uh, do we want him to make those pull requests to the individual working groups? Or would it be easier for us to have the chair from the working group grab the standardized readme from the governance? Uh, into their repo because they would have the they would have the most up to date information and would be able to uh, personalize it for their their repo. It just it might be easier that way and remove some of the burden on on Yash because he, he is doing a he is already doing a lot of work with the standardization. Yeah, that's expensive to leave that decision up to Yash because I feel like on the one hand um, Yash should get credit for the fact that he's doing all of this work on all of these readmes. Um, and, um, but on the other hand, I don't want to put undue burden on, on Yash if you'd rather have the chairs do it. So I would, I, I would tend to leave that decision up to Yash, but that's my personal opinion. Um, I think uh, the uh, information which is generally available that I can compile, but uh, relating to the history the purpose, I think the maintainers would be better suited to answer those questions. So, so. Um, just a point of clarification. So when I look at like the chaos organization, like we have a ton of repos that I don't know if are gonna to apply to the standardization, like translations. And there's a bunch of like, obviously Grimoire Lab and Augur and, um, Metri there's a metrics repo, community handbook. So like, is the, is the standard readme gonna just be across all repos of the whole chaos organization? Um, or currently we plan to do it only for the working groups, five, the working groups, which we have. We are currently planning to do that only for that. Okay, that makes things a lot easier then, I think. <laughs> if we just do those five, that's a little easier. 
And then if I guess later we decide we want to apply the standard readme to some of the other repositories, we can do that. But certainly we can start with the working groups. That makes sense. OK, so action items for all of those who are in working groups, decide who your chairs are. Right? Um, it's already done. What's already done? Common. Oh, oh, Commons already done. Yeah, because Commons ahead of the game. <laughs> okay, um, any other questions about this? Comments, concerns? Okay, then we will move on to item number four. Uh, again, something else that came up from Common and talking about the, the standardization. Um, so we would like to also pose this to the working groups. We want to point to a central code of conduct and contributing .md docs, because um, right now it's kind of, um, everyone's kind of doing their own thing and we would rather just kind of centralize that. So if there is a change, um, it you know, ripples across and we don't have to figure out where all the duplication is and change it everywhere. So um, just want to make sure that that's okay with everybody. Yeah, so with respect to the code of conduct, it is the same in every repository, at least. So, right. so like, yeah, it's just copied and pasted into separate docs, which is what we'll get rid of, I think. Yeah, so that's, I think that's an easy, and then contributing the solution was, I think that there would be like a contributing file that would account for like, 80% of the story with respect to contributing or 85, you know, some portion. And then if each working group has slightly more localized practices, they can specify that within their specific repository. So the contributing.md file would say, please go here, pointing to the central, saying we follow all of these main contributing rules. And then here's a couple other things that we do specifically in our working group. So if there's any modification, it can still happen. So yeah, that's another thing that the, I guess, working groups will have to um, make those changes and decide if there is specific things for them that they want to bring out. Any other questions about this? And do I remember right that the um, these documents, where, where are they going to go? Are they going to go, where is going to be the main like code of conduct? Where are we housing that? Or the so, main contributing? The... Yeah, we're creating a, a templates folder within the governance repo. Yeah, maybe the governance repo. And okay. then within, so we, we're already doing this actually, so. Uh, within the governance repo, there's a, a several template documents that uh, standardize how we link to the contributing document, how we link to the code of conduct, and then that's where the, the readme is also being created. And then we are moving the, uh, the metrics template from the metrics repo uh, into, into governance repo as well. Okay, thanks. But the actual code of conduct and the contributing don't live within the templates, but the, we have templates that show you how to point to those. I think the actual documents live under the kind of the main governance repo. Correct. Okay. Thanks. I would have the code of conduct actually on living on the website. If it, lives on, if it lives on the repo, people can also see any changes that we make to the code of conduct. Whereas if you move it to the website, that decreases that bit of transparency. So the code of conduct, uh, sorry, my internet connection is unstable again. Yeah, we can't hear you, Kevin, if you're speaking. Oh, 
we're all waiting. So we'll, I was going to say, we're all just like <laughs> anticipating what you're going to say. I'm sure it's super important. I was <laughs> we, can, about, we can come back to it. I was thinking about pointing to the website because it looks nicer. And the website is like the front facing official, official thing. We can link to the markdown file in the governance repo where we have the history. It just doesn't look as nice, but it gets oh. the same information across. But I, I think that's the one exception for when we should duplicate it. I think it should be duplicated on the website and in the governance repo. But I think the other repos should link to the governance repo. But what I recall, website pulls the data from the GitHub Markdown. So if we maintain it on the GitHub Markdown and website pulls from there, it will be no duplication and serve both the purposes. So Kevin just wrote in chat, we are pulling it directly to, I'm assuming to the website from the governance repo and duplication is fine here, he says. Okay. okay, I think we're good then. Are we good? Everyone okay? Yeah, the, the one kind of funny thing that people may not notice, but if we pull the metrics template out of the metrics repo, then the metrics repo actually has nothing in it, which is kind of funny for the chaos project <laughs> that, that our metric yeah. repository is completely empty. empty. Yeah. I, mean, I, I get it's it. Why? Not to have but... one. <laughs> Maybe it shouldn't be its own repo. I'm okay with leaving the metrics template in the metrics repo. I'm also okay with archiving the metrics repo because there is some work that we did early on that I would like That's to preserve the git history. That's on. true. Yeah. We do have a releasing.md file in the metrics repo itself. Gotcha. Okay, so um, I think we can go ahead and move along on our agenda to item number five, which is conference submissions. We um, did submit something. I think Ruth did. She was on the call, but she is not anymore. Um, totally fine. Uh, Ruth submitted some things to ATO, uh, all things open. Uh, did anyone else submit things? Sean, did you submit something? Um, I ended up not submitting something. I decided I'd focus on OSPOCON and OSS Summit Europe in Seattle. Did you say OSS Summit Europe in Seattle? I did. I did. That's that's what it is right now, I think. Is that that's actually happening? I think so, as far as I know. Yeah. They, I did move, away. they did move the European event to Seattle because um, it's it's looking like travel is going to be potentially problematic. Yeah, the URL that. still says OSS Europe. So. Well, maybe they will keep the, the time zone still. If the t-shirts are already printed, they might just keep the name. So, <laughs> so Georg, you submitted something to ATO? Yeah, I submitted the... Um, the same thing that I asked on the mailing list for a panel or workshop of, for the open source summit on leaderboard. I submitted that as a talk to all things open because it's a month later. And so whatever outcome we have from the workshop or panel, I figured that would make for an interesting talk at all things open. And thank you everyone who has expressed interest on participating on that. I haven't followed up yet, but. We have several awesome people who want to participate in that. I'm super excited. So maybe I'm going to ATO. <laughs> and Sophia, you had said you submitted. Did I see that in the chat or yeah, somewhere? I did. It's okay. going to be yeah. a little bit, it's not 
chaos focus, but there'll be metrics in it. So there will be mentions of chaos in the project. If anyone to talk, but it's not really metric related, it's more business risk related. For where, Don? For ATO? Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say it if anyone be. who submitted a paper needs any kind of chaos, um, like logos or anything like that, uh, just let, let me know. I can point them to you. They're on the website too, under I think about. So, or if you need any other assets or anything and you can't find them, let me know. Cool. Matt, what were you saying? Oh, uh, nothing. I'll wait till we hear back from ATO. Okay. Risk Working Group is talking about a number of talks. So I think we are probably going to submit one for OSS Seattle or OSPOCON. <laughs> uh, but we haven't done that yet. So we can fill it in later. And they are actually still doing an OSPOCON EU that they're going to bump up against the open source strategy forum in London. So I think that's going to be somewhere around the sixth, seventh, something like that. It hasn't been officially announced. Um, Chris Anacek has kind of talked about it pretty broadly, um, but I don't think they've opened the CFP for it yet. Is that the one on financial services focus? London yeah, the Open Source Strategy Forum is a joint thing between the um, FINOS and um, the LF. Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, I see also on here um, <laughs> Chaos Con with numerous question marks after it. <laughs> Still the perpetual conversation about if we host it virtual or in person? Well, here we are, right? I, so, I mean, if OSS Seattle is happening, I mean. Then we should happen. I mean. Then here it is. So. Do we want to like, do a, do we want to do a full chaos con or right. would we like to do something smaller? Maybe just a meetup or a. Well, we could, so we typically, right? We form a team of folks that are interested in kind yeah. of coordinating this work. And so I guess the question would be, should we even just form the team of people that could then maybe decide, Kevin, to your point, like if it's a meetup or half day or full day or <laughs> whatever, you know, I mean, I however think, we want to do it. I think we should follow the lead of the Linux Foundation. If they're planning a face-to-face -face event, then I think we ought to as well. Um, but it's we going to be a high, it's going to be a hybrid event, so we will yeah. we will have people participating remotely. Okay. So, I mean, I would I'd sign up to participate in helping to figure that out for the next monthly meeting. If anybody else yeah, wants to join in, I can think of who I would draft, but it won't be mean. <laughs> who said, who <laughs> they said all raised yes. their hands, yeah, so we're good. <laughs> Elizabeth, Sean, Georg. I'll I think I heard Don. Well. Don, okay. And yeah, Don. you can you can add my name there too. Well, we'll we can write, I'll write our names here. I think for not having been together for so long, I would really like a more engaging, less talk-driven meetup kind of thing, working groups, whatever. That's my thought right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say the same thing. I think if we have more like on conference type of like content, like, you know, less slide wear and talk, I'd be, I think that would be more productive and interesting. And if it's hybrid, I think it has to follow that format as a practical matter. Should yeah, I'm not sure it? if on conference is going to work virtually. I mean, I guess in theory it could, but I think that'll be pretty yeah. miserable. But that, I was thinking more like the short, short nature of talks and yeah. 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 
shall we shall we call this chaos con europe in seattle in there seattle and around the world apparently <laughs> We can call it Chaos Con 2020 and 21. I think it might be good. Um, I don't know, Matt, I think you were already talking to the Linux Foundation a little bit about um, events like this, like, um, you know, getting space. It might be, it might be good to talk to them about exactly how they expect this whole hybrid thing to work. And we can let that maybe drive some of our thinking around what to do. Yep, I can send an email just today to figure out what's going on. Yeah, because I think like all things open is like they're very specific, right? Day one is going to be in person and day two is all going to be on Zoom or some conferencing tool, but I don't know if that's what LF is doing. More to come, I'll, I'll find out yeah. some info. Cool, thanks. So if people want to um, help out with that, they should add their name to the minutes. Is that correct? Right, that's what we decided. Yeah, that'd be good. Cool, okay. Can we can we badge ourselves? I was just gonna say that. We should at least go through the process. I don't know that we would, I mean, do, would, that is, that, is that okay? Badge? I don't know. It, feels it a sounds like it. Tautology of some sort. I'm tall, therefore I'm tall. <laughs> I'd be okay with it as long as we make sure that the reviewers are not the organizers. Agreed. <laughs> I was thinking about how the badging program has influenced this conference submission process. Um, looking at the kinds of questions they're asking about you as the speaker and demographics. And I was thinking like, hmm, is this related? <laughs> I might be partly behind this in some way. <laughs> yeah, the LF events team has been amazing just in terms of submissions to the badging program, as well as just the whole communication during the process. So. It's been great. It's, it's been a learning experience, I think, on both sides for everybody. So it is nice to see some of those suggestions in practice, which is awesome. And we have a great podcast episode coming out at the start of next month. We do. All right, yay, chaos con. Woohoo! <laughs> yay! <laughs> In Seattle and around the world. Okay, what else do we have? Eight minutes. We don't have anything else on the agenda. So, is there other things we should? Well, do? maybe one other thing that you could people could. Is there anything you would like, like item wise, at Chaos Con? T shirts, hats, gloves. All of all of those things. zipper hoodies. <laughs> I want zipper hoodies. Hoodies are expensive. Yeah, I know. But, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe they'll just fall from the sky. Maybe so. Well, if you have thoughts, sure let need, me know. We for sure need the poker chips again. Maybe a different color this time. The post COVID yeah. colors. Can do. Maybe black and white poker chips to sort of signify the return to a full engaged world. Should we start a document somewhere of like all of the, all of the ideas and just like dump them all in one place? I think we know, yeah, I think we have something. I think we have to go back into the, yeah. The, archive machine <laughs> find find where that is because <laughs> we always have great well, ideas that come of these meetings but i just want to make sure that they're not lost you know also as a reminder for everyone who is participating in the planning of chaos con we have a handbook page that we can use as a reminder of all the things that we need to do 
as a checklist to make sure we are on top of things. Awesome. All right, well, it looks like we're about out of time. We have, well, we have six minutes left, so we're actually not out of, about out of time, but. Ending a meeting early is else. never a problem. Y'all can have a few extra minutes to go outside, do whatever. Um, have a great day, everybody. And we Bye, will everyone. see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Thanks everybody.